Hey guys, Charlie here. Today we're hanging out in Colorado, somewhere near Boulder. And we're hanging out with our friends from the Center for Severe Weather Research. I think they're here Come right on. now. Oh, Come on, you gotta go, guys. Good luck like hanging out with some storm chasers to start your day. We're hoping for a giant storm. Let's go chase it down. I don't know, Kerr Moonbows are pretty cool. Trust me, this is gonna be bumping. What's up, guys? Hey. I'm Charlie. I'm Kirby. We're so excited that you're here. All right, check it out. The most frustrating thing just happened. The worst. Just like 10 minutes ago, we were outside in front getting ready to go to the beach. We had everything we needed. We were ready to go. Umbrella? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Goggles? Check. Ready to roll. It's raining! No! Is that a tornado warning? No! We gotta get inside quick until this thing passes. Come on. It's storming outside. And NATO is. Tornado sirens. I just want to go to the beach. That's definitely not happening. I know. So we just got robbed of a beach day, and we want to make sure that that never happens again. Never. So today, we're checking out weather, but not just any weather, the extreme weather. The big weather. The beach day breaking, plan canceling, no outside playing, big, bad, nasty weather. Today, we're unraveling the world of... Tornadoes and hurricanes. Okay, so for the past couple minutes, Kirby and I have put some effort into checking out some weather stuff. The neatest weather stuff. And there's some pretty neat weather stuff out there. Like moon bows, rainbows that show up at night when the moon's almost full. And thunder snow, that's a blizzard with tons of thunder and lightning. There are crazy hailstorms, sandstorms, and mamatus clouds that look like colorful, fluffy egg cartons in the sky. But what gets us really excited? Tornadoes and hurricanes. Crazy strong storm events that are basically the closest thing we have to Mother Nature sucker punching Earth right in the jaw. Hurricanes and tornadoes are incredibly powerful storm events. They're like someone took a normal storm, cranked the wind speed up to 11, and forced the whole thing into a giant torpedo of destruction. But for real, these things are really nothing to mess around with because they can be super dangerous. So safety is the number one thing when you're in an area that is experiencing a hurricane or a tornado. So instead of freaking out about the fact that there's a tornado warning going on outside, Kirby and I decided to cope by doing what we do best. A little research and crafting. First up, tornadoes. Tornadoes don't just happen during any storm. They happen during supercell thunderstorms. Cool science word, supercell thunderstorms. They're really intense thunderstorms that have swirling columns of air in the middle that kind of look like this. That swirling wind area is called the mesocyclone. When there's really low air pressure, the mesocyclone starts making its way to the ground, mixing with cold and hot air. When the swirling wind mass touches the ground, that's when we've got a tornado on our hands. And that's also when we have a tornado warning on our hands. This is how it works. First, there's a siren. Then on TV, something like this usually shows up. If there's a tornado watch, that means the weather people think there's a chance that mesocyclone might be touching down sometime soon. If there's a tornado warning, that means the mesocyclone has touched down. There's a tornado somewhere and there could be more. So a tornado watch is like a big maybe, but a tornado warning is like a heads up man, a tornado has been spotted, so get to your basement and be safe. Cool, cool? Cool, cool. Guys, guys, this is great, but can we please talk about the fact that there are a bunch of different kinds of tornadoes? So weird, check it out. So first you have your standard tornado. Basic shape, swirling wind, single cone, etc. Then you have your land spout, kind of like a junior tornado that forms from the ground up. Water spout tornadoes form over bodies of water. Multiple vortex tornadoes have more than one touchdown point. 
and my personal favorite, a family of tornadoes. Like a herd of tornadoes thundering across an area, all coming from the same cloud. So those are tornadoes. Tornadoes. Tornadoes, we got them down. Hurricane time? Hurricane time. Let's dive in. Hurricanes always start as storms in the middle of the ocean. When the temperature gets warm enough, winds start pushing the air up and out. The air keeps rising because it's so warm and humid, forming this enormous donut-shaped storm that slowly makes its way toward land. Here's the thing about hurricanes. They're massively bigger than tornadoes, like 1,000 times bigger. One hurricane can cover the entire east coast of the United States, while tornadoes usually move through just one town at a time. If the wind of one of these storms reaches 38 miles per hour, weather people call it a tropical depression. If those winds boost up to 39 miles per hour, it's now a tropical storm, and we give it a name like Jeremy or Jillian or Julian or anything else. Once Julian hits 74 miles per hour, now he's graduated to hurricane status. Congrats, Julian, we're so proud of you, you big old hurricane. So we got the basics down. Yeah, but we want to know how to predict these bad boys. Like we know that tornadoes come from supercell thunderstorms and hurricanes come from warm, humid air over the ocean. But that's not really enough. To really understand these things, we need to become... Weathermen. And weather women. Weather people. Stick around for a news weather update from EWN. The Extreme Weather Network. 80% chance of fun weather facts heading your way, so stick around. That was really bad. Not my best line. Weird but true, water spouts can lift sea creatures out of the water, causing them to rain down from the sky. Today we're checking out extreme weather. Tornadoes and hurricanes. Tornadoes and hurricanes. We kind of squared away what they are. We want to learn how to predict them. We need to become... Weather people. Weather people. But we found out that if weather's your thing, there are a whole bunch of different jobs you can do to study it. More than just your television weatherman slash lady. Want to check them out? I'm game. Okay. Awesome. First, we'll start out with your television man slash woman. The people you see on TV on the news are usually meteorologists. They study short-term weather, like day-to-day -day weather, that might last from a few days to a few weeks. They use complex computer models to predict patterns and give us the weather for the week or the night, usually presenting it in front of a green screen. I'm meteorologist Kirby with the Extreme Weather Network. So that's a meteorologist, but I know that being in front of the camera is not for everyone. So for those really smart science people who get jacked up about global weather, maybe climatology is your thing. You might want to become a climatologist, like Greg over here. Hey! Climatologists study climate, and you might be thinking, weather, climate, what's the difference? Well, climate is basically just weather averaged over a long period of time. While meteorologists study weather over a few days or weeks, climatologists study how weather changes over months or years or millions of years. They're the ones that track global weather patterns and figure out the ways that humans are affecting the global climate. Cool, cool, but maybe you're looking for something a little more extreme. Meteorologists are a little passive, climatologists are doing research all the time, you're looking for an adrenaline rush, a thrill. Luckily, there's a job for people like you. This is Cindy. Hey! She's a hurricane hunter. That's her legitimate job title. That's right. As a hurricane hunter, she flies planes through actual hurricanes, carrying radar and computer equipment, gathering data to help researchers track hurricanes and predict their paths. But maybe you don't fly planes, like Bill. Hello! Bill's a storm chaser. That's right! Storm chaser is a title for anyone who likes to find, follow, or maybe even photograph extreme weather. Like me, Bill. Like big thunderstorms, or hurricanes, or even tornadoes. Some people do this because they like taking pictures of the weather. Or maybe they do their own research projects. Or maybe they just do it for the thrill of it. Oh, what's up, Curb? Where you been? Around. Cool, but this still doesn't answer our question, right? We know about all the jobs, but we don't know how to predict the severe weather. Like, when's the next tornado gonna hit? Or hurricane. Or the next moonbow. Not sure if they can predict those, but you guys know what we're talking about, right? We got to talk to someone. We need some answers. But no worries, we know exactly who to talk to. Josh and Karen from the Center for Severe Weather Research. 
So when we got on this extreme weather kick, we decided to give Josh a call. Hey Josh, it's Kirby. Hi Kirby, how about coming on over? Perfect, see you in five. Boom, that easy. So we're off to the Center for Severe Weather Research to meet up with Josh and Karen. You guys wanna come along? Awesome, we'll see you in a bit. See you soon. Weird but true, worms rain down on a schoolyard in Louisiana. Hey guys, you're just in time. Today, Kirby and I are investigating extreme weather because earlier today, there was a tornado warning. But check it out, it kinda looks like it's clearing up outside. Perfect, let's do it. Let's roll. So we're off to Boulder, Colorado. Colorado means colored red in Spanish. And it's a beautiful place to check out wildlife and wild weather. Boulder is also where you can find the Center for Severe Weather Research. The experts here at the CSWR study extreme weather like hurricanes, tornadoes, and blizzards year round. NSF. National, National Science, Science Foundation. Foundation. There you go. Center for Severe Weather Research. Got a feeling they're in here. Hello. Hey guys. Josh, Karen. Hi, I'm Charlie. Hi. Hi, Hi. Josh. Hi. Karen. Hi. Nice to meet you. This is Kirby. Hi, nice to meet you. Guys, Josh and Karen. Josh and Karen, guys. Meet Joshua, president of the CSWR, and he's got three degrees from MIT. If it's tornado related or has to do with 100 mile per hour winds, Joshua's your guy. His favorite weird but true fact is that it's nearly impossible to see a rainbow in the sky at full noon. What got you interested in this stuff? Why weather? Well, we're really interested in things that aren't known. So how do tornadoes form? How do hurricanes produce severe winds right at the surface? There are a lot of questions about weather that just aren't known. So have you ever been inside a tornado before? Inside a weak tornado. We've intercepted about 200 some tornadoes with our program. And we've only been hit maybe two or three times. Are you calm? Are you freaking out? Because I'd be freaking out. Inside a tornado, it's kind of scary. It's very windy, stuff shaking around. Sometimes things are hitting. Rocks or pieces of buildings, things like that are hitting. Ooh. But we've done just fine. We're reasonably armored and we okay. stay pretty safe. How well can they predict when a tornado is going to hit? Some things we can predict really well about tornadoes. But what we don't know are the precise details. So what we're trying to do with all of our equipment is understand the differences between the storms that make tornadoes and the ones that don't, so we can forecast them better. So what are the best conditions for tornadoes to form? So we need warm, soupy air at the surface. Yum. Like soupy, sweaty, kind of <laughs> gross Nasty. day. You want a gross day. But that's not enough. The second condition is really important, a really strong jet stream above that warm, soupy air. So you get a thunderstorm, and the jet stream combined with the winds at the surface makes that thunderstorm rotate. And it's a rotating thunderstorm that's critical. That's a supercell. Soupy air, <laughs> jet stream, supercell, Steamy maybe tornado. Steamy weather. And then, Steamy weather. And then the mystery ingredient. <laughs> and then tornado. <laughs> Which and is what you're figuring yes. out, right? Yeah. That's right, that's right. Yeah. We want to know what's the special sauce, what's the mystery ingredient nice. that makes some of those storms make tornadoes. We're still looking. We're still <laughs> trying to find out. Weird but true fact, the fastest tornado ever recorded was over 300 miles per hour. That's faster than a race car. And Josh was the one to measure it. The average warning for tornadoes now is about 13 minutes. And that's much better than it used to be. What we're working on is trying to increase the understanding so that we teach the people who are making the future warnings. So when the tornado warning's happening, everyone's hunkering down. You guys are heading out, right? You're we're hopefully already out, out there. Oh, you're hopefully out there. Yeah, we're already out there. <laughs> if you see us pull into your driveway, that's yeah. a bad sign. So we have a whole bunch of different kinds of instruments which we can show you yeah. that we drop around the tornadoes. Show us the way. These are called tornado pots. We have about 20 of these. And when a tornado's coming along, we drive right in front and we drop them. Hopefully, the tornado runs them over. It's pretty stable. The computer that collects all the data is inside this box, which is very tough. 
and we measure the wind in the tornado two different ways. One with this regular blade. This sonic anemometer is using sound waves to measure the speed of sound in different directions, kind of like what a bat puts out. Fun science word, anemometer. No, nope. anemometer. It's just a fancy word for a wind speed measurer. And then we have cameras looking at the debris flying by in the tornado. There's a GPS, so we know where it is. So how does the information you gather help people predict future weather? We're trying to learn more about what's near the tornadoes and also what's going on inside the tornadoes where we really can't send people. So Karen's setting up something that you'll really like. When we want to understand how tornadoes form, we need to know what the temperatures and humidities are way above the ground. So Karen is beginning to prepare a weather balloon. Yes, hi. Karen's a bona fide expert in all things wind related. She's a big fan of chasing down storms. So if you see bad weather brewing in Boulder, there's a good chance Karen's close by. Karen's favorite weird but true fact, lightning strikes men more often than women. So how high do the weather balloons go? They go up to about 60,000 feet, telling us what the temperature is like, what the winds are like, and what the moisture is like through the whole atmosphere. So would they be able to tell us if a storm's cooking today? They'll tell us if it's a good environment for a storm to form in. One really cool thing about those balloons is that they go up and up. The balloon gets bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger, eventually becomes about the size of a house. And Holy then it oh. pops. This is your balloon. A little dusty. Oh, man. Bro. Bro. Just keep a grip on it. It's filling up with tons and tons of helium until it gets massive enough to fly up into space. This thing's going up 60,000 feet. We're measuring temperature, humidity. Wind speed. Wind speed. Are we doing this? Ready? Ready. Ready. That thing is moving. Weird but true, the largest known hailstone in the U.S. was about the size of a soccer ball. So what are we seeing here? We're looking at the data from the weather balloon you just launched. So this blue line here, that's your temperature profile. So mm -hmm. as the balloon's going up, you're seeing that the temperature is decreasing with height, and it seems like it hit a real moist layer there, so that's probably the cloud. How long do you usually track them for? It depends on the project. You could track them basically until they burst. Oh, man, guys, launching our very own weather balloon. I think there's no way we're topping that one today. Oh, we are going to top that. So prepare to be amazed and come see the Doppler on wheels. Doppler on wheels. Yes. Let's check it out. Yeah. This is the Dazzler on Wheels. It's so, huge. It is huge. So even though the truck is really cool, what's really cool is the radar on the back. So yeah. we take this up to severe weather to study tornadoes and hurricanes to really study what's going on inside. Can we take it for a spin? We can. Yeah? Yeah, come on in. Okay, let's yeah. go. <laughs> Right now, we're in their mobile research vehicle to see how they go chase thunderstorms. I think we're heading in the right direction. Once we know a storm's coming, we throw down the hydraulics, we fire up the transmitters, start the radar spinning, raise the mast, and we're ready to get some data. All right, Josh, looks like the Doppler on wheels is ready to go, right? We're parked on the top of a hill. We have good visibility all around. We have the radar on and scanning, and we're watching to see if new storms are developing. That's a lot to control. Does it ever go haywire? When we're out there on a very fast-paced mission, trying to chase the tornadoes, we're coordinating what other teams are doing. Dropping pods. Sometimes teams are launching weather balloons. It's a lot to keep Jeez. track of. We don't want anybody hurt, so we're trying to keep people just out of harm's way. And that's what we stay focused on in this mission control truck. We're getting as much data as possible, but everyone's good to go. Yes. So we're back in the Doppler on wheels, and this is the weather. That's happening outside right now, right? We're watching some rain showers that are over the mountains, so we can track them here. The green and bluer areas are areas where it's raining. When it gets to be yellow and pink again, that's when it's really hard or hail. So how far away can this thing reach? Sometimes we can see 100 miles away. Right now, we are looking about 40 miles. Some of these cells are maybe about 20, 25 miles away, and they're kind of moving in our direction. So right now we're in the storm waiting mode, getting ready to go into that storm chasing mode. So hopefully it starts heading towards us. Fingers crossed. 
All right, so I'm sure most of you think that storm chasing is really high intensity stuff. You're being thrashed around by tornadoes all over the place. And that's what it is like sometimes. But most of the time, the storm chasing is kind of more like storm waiting. Yeah, you think we should check the radar? Yeah, probably. I'll go do it. All right. We got a uh, storm coming in the path over to the west. It's a little cool outside. The sun's starting to go down. Today is probably not a great day for severe weather. All right, guys, so unfortunately, we didn't see any storms today, but that's all right, because we figured out how the actual scientists do their storm chasing. We got to kick it back to HQ super quickly, because we're almost running out of time. And I'm sure Josh and Karen have a lot of super important research to do. Hold tight. We'll see you real soon. Weird but true, bolts of lightning can shoot out of an erupting volcano. Definitely cooler than a man though. I don't know, man. Oh, hey guys. Hey, what's up? We just got back from the CSWR. The Center for Severe Weather Research. Here you go! <laughs> oh, man. We saw all of Josh and Karen's storm weather chasing equipment. It was crazy cool. So we pretty much have it figured out, right? How to predict these tornadoes. What else did we learn today? There were so many weird but true things. A tropical storm becomes a hurricane when wind speeds hit 74 miles per hour. An anemometer is a tool that can measure the wind speeds of a tornado. Hurricane hunters fly planes through hurricanes to study them. Hey guys, it looks pretty clear outside. Maybe we can go to the beach. Perfect. You go grab the beach stuff. I'll double check the weather. Cool, cool. No storms, we're looking good. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. You see that storm system over Moline? Forget the beach stuff. We gotta go chase this storm. Let's do it. All right, guys, we gotta go. But stop by again when we discover more things that are weird but true. All right, check it out. You gotta go this way. Mm -hmm.